In this video, we're going to talk about titrations and pH curves. And we're going to talk about how when we're doing titrations with weak acids and weak bases, uh, those look different than the titrations we did in general chemistry 1 with strong acids and strong bases. And when I got partway through, I realized that I was being a little ambitious. So actually, the discussion of pH curves is going to get moved to the next video. So don't be surprised when you get to the end. Okay, so let's consider um, things we talked about in general chemistry one. That is, you know, titrations with strong acids and strong bases, right? We have a strong acid, hydrochloric acid, strong base, sodium hydroxide. Our products are going to be the salt, sodium chloride, and water, right? One of the things we can define is the equivalence point of a titration, right? The equivalence point of a titration is um, is reached when the number of moles of acid is equal to the number of moles of base. Okay? So, the equivalence point is an important, an important uh, milestone right, in a titration, right? Because the whole point of a titration is to do a quantitative measurement of one thing based on known concentrations of another thing, right? And since we have to be quantitative, it's about mole-to-mole -mole ratios, okay? And so getting that mole-to-mole -mole ratio correct is the point of a titration, okay? And so that makes the equivalence point essential to determine, right? So let's consider the chemistry of our titration and ask us a, a question, right? What is the pH at the equivalence point. Okay? Well, one of the ways of doing it, of, of figuring this out, is to, to focus on, right, our product salt, right? We know we got water. Water's, you know, water is going to do its thing. But what's going to happen with sodium chloride? Okay. So, if we, you know, the sodium chloride will um, dissociate. So, if we consider the dissociation we can look at the sodium ions, right? And how sodium ions might react with water. Okay, so sodium ions reacting with water, since sodium is positive, they're going to take the negative part of the water if they take anything. That might make sodium hydroxide plus hydrogen ions. But if we look at this, sodium hydroxide is a strong base. So that means this reaction won't go this way. It will go that way as a complete reaction. And if it goes that way as a complete reaction, we're not making hydrogen ions. Therefore, the sodium ions in solution will have no effect on the pH, right? So sodium ions in solution, we can ignore. They're not going to make anything that will affect our pH, right? We do the same thing then with the chloride ion, right? The chloride ion is negative. If it would react with water, it would take the positive part of the water, which would be the hydrogen ion, and make hydrogen chloride or hydrochloric acid in the water plus 
hydroxide ions. But again, right, hydrochloric acid is one of our strong acids. When it's in a reaction, it's going to react completely this way, which means we're not going to make any hydroxide ion, which means the chloride ion is also going to have no effect on pH. Which means the only thing that can have an effect on the pH is water and its autoionization, which means the pH will be 7 at the equivalence point when we're titrating a strong acid with a strong base. Okay? So that's a way you can you can sort of look at the effect of ions in solution on the pH more generally. Okay? Now let's consider what will happen if we titrate a weak acid, like acetic acid, with a strong base like sodium hydroxide. Right? And here is our equation for the reaction of our acetic acid with sodium hydroxide. Our product is sodium acetate, that's our salt, plus water. Okay, and so now let's look at what happens when this salt dissociates in water. Well, right, one point is that our sodium ions might interact with water. Again, Sodium being positive, it's going to, if it reacts, it will take the negative part of water, which would be the hydroxide ion plus hydrogen ions. But again, sodium hydroxide is a strong base. Because it's a strong base, it will push the reaction that way completely, meaning we won't make any hydrogen ions. So again, the sodium ion has no effect on the pH, right? As a result of it, it the product of that reaction being a strong base. But if we look at our acetate ion, and let it react with water, right? Our product is acetic acid plus hydroxide ions, right? But acetic acid is a weak acid, right? As a weak acid, Instead of any reaction being complete, right, this will be an equilibrium reaction. And because it's an equilibrium reaction, we will make some hydroxide ions, right? And so as a result, because you know, because the acetate ion is in equilibrium with a weak acid, the presence of acetate ion with nothing to balance it does affect the pH. And therefore, because the only thing we made that affects the pH is hydroxide ions, the equivalence point will be at a basic pH, okay? And so we can have a titration where the equivalence point isn't at zero. It is at a basic pH because the product ion then reacts with water to create excess hydroxide ions. So now we'll show an example of calculating the pH at the equivalence point 
for a weak acid strong base titration. So we're just going to pick a representative weak acid. So we'll take 20 milliliters of 0.1 molar acetic acid, and we're going to titrate that with 0.04 molar sodium hydroxide, right? And since it's a stoichiometry problem, right, we, have, we need our balanced equation, and we need to work the problem in moles, right? So the first thing we can do is calculate the number of moles of acetic acid, right? So we have uh, our 20 milliliters is 0 0.0200 liters. We know that we have 0 0.10 moles of acetic acid. Per liter, right, and that's going to give us 0 0.0020 moles of acetic acid. Okay, so we'll start there on the next slide. Okay, so here we are, we've still got our balanced equation here, and we've got the 0 0.0020 moles of acetic acid that we um, calculated um, just before, right? And we know the stoichiometry here is that one mole of acetic acid reacts with one mole of sodium hydroxide. And often we make this as an assumption, but let's write it down explicitly. So we know that one mole of sodium hydroxide reacts with one mole of acetic acid. So, therefore, we're going to have, at our equivalence point, the same number of moles of sodium hydroxide, right? But that sodium hydroxide is coming from a different solution. So, our 0 0.0020 moles of sodium hydroxide is coming from a solution in which one liter of that solution contains 0 0.040 moles of sodium hydroxide. And so, and since we're doing a titration, right, we will probably me measure this in milliliters because it's coming out of the burette, and we always have to think about how we're going to really measure this in the lab. So 1,000 milliliters is a liter. And so that means that in order to get this number of moles, we will need 50 um, milliliters of our sodium hydroxide solution. Okay? So we'll need 50 milliliters of our sodium hydroxide solution to give us the same number of moles of our sodium hydroxide as we had in our acetic acid that started in 20 milliliters of solution, right? So now, assuming, right, that there's no, no weird dilution, right, we've got a combination of 20 milliliters plus 50 milliliters is going to be 70, that was a really bad 7, right? 70 milliliters of solution, right, at the end. Okay? And we've got, and now we've converted all of our acetic acid and sodium hydroxide into sodium acetate. Right? In the same way it's one-to-one, Right? We should also then have 0 0.0020 moles of our product, sodium acetate. Okay? So we're going to have this many moles of sodium acetate in now this volume of solution. So here, right, is our 0 0.002 moles of our sodium acetate product now in 70 milliliters, or 0 0.070 liters. And if we calculate that out, we get a concentration of um, sodium acetate of about 
2.857 times 10 to the minus 2 molar. Okay, that's our concentration of sodium acetate. But we know that sodium acetate, right, when it dissociates, right, sodium acetate, will dissociate completely to form sodium ions plus acetate ions, right? And if this was the concentration of our sodium acetate, this will be the concentration of our acetate ions because of the complete dissociation. And we know that Right? If we put acetate ions in solution, they will react with water to create acetic acid molecules plus hydroxide ions. And so, right, we said our solution would be basic. We need to calculate the concentration of hydroxide ions there, right? And so the Kb for this base dissociation is going to be our Ka, 1.0 times 10 to the minus 14, or our Kw, divided by our Ka for acetic acid, which is 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5, and we get 5.55 times 10 to the minus 10 as our equilibrium constant for our base dissociation. Okay, so if we start with all of that, right, here's our, e our equilibrium expression. Here's our Kb that we just found, right? Here would be our concentration of acetate ions after we consider the d complete dissociation of, of sodium acetate, right? And so if we start with, right, we don't worry about water because it's liquid, right? So it, it, its activity is one, but we start out with none of that and none of that. Minus x plus x plus x, 2.857 times 10 to the minus 2 minus x, x and x. Right, if we remind ourselves, right, because our equilibrium constant is so small, x will be very small, and so, right, we can make our assumption and ignore x right there, and so we end up then writing out the expression that our 5.55 times 10 to the minus 10 is going to be equal to x squared divided by our 2.857 times 10 to the minus 2, right? If we multiply that out, one point eight five seven three times 10 to the minus 11 is equal to x squared. 3.984 times 10 to the minus 6 would be x after we take the square root. But x, if we look here, is the hydroxide ion concentration. Right? So we have to take... 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14 divided by the 3.984 times 10 to the minus 6, right? That equals the concentration of hydrogen ions, which is about 2.51. Make a better 5 than that. 5.1. times 10 to the minus 9, so our pH 
is 8.60, which was basic as we predicted. So that is showing the steps to calculate the equivalence point if you are titrating a weak acid with a strong base. You have to show the reaction, completely converting your acid into the conjugate base salt, and then calculate the pH of that conjugate base salt solution, which would be basic. Okay? I think this video is long enough, so I'm going to take a break here. But in our next video, we'll continue talking about this, and we'll talk about titration curves. Right? That is, right, if we plot, you know, in this case, base added, and look at the, the pH, what happens and what that can tell us, right? So we'll talk about titration curves, which will lead us to talk about um, using the differential of the titration curve to identify the endpoint using indicators, probably something we're familiar with, to determine the equivalence point. And then we'll also talk about a weak base, strong acid titration, just to complete the circle.